Hello, hello, hello. And we are back from our commercial break with the lovely Miss Tracy Williams, all the way from the UK. So, Miss Tracy, I was reading in your bio that you have multimedia platforms. Explain to me about how that works, how you kind of started to expand just from being an author and kind of going into doing other things that you do. Well, I think the multimedia really the educationalist side of me. The stories is the author element. And, you know, I spent about 18 months writing the stories. So I was just in a creative writing flow for about 18 months. And the stories, Lakia, I had both a sense of elation and achievement. But I also had um, a sense of deflation as well, you know, because the, the British Empire is, is, you know, it has such a lot of moving parts to it. I didn't want the stories to sit in a vacuum because, you know, it, once I'd published them, it would be, well, who's the stories? Who are the stories for? You know, who are your target audience? Why have you written them? I mean... Yeah, okay, I've written them for because I've been inspired to, it, to write them, but, you know, there's got to be a proof of concept about it. And when I was writing the stories, which must have been back in 2017, 2018, there wasn't really that much of a heightened sense of awareness to learn more about the subject of the British Empire. It was very much a taboo subject, to be really honest, if I'm really honest about it. It was... You know, it was a, it was an uncomfortable truth, so to speak, that you know that nobody really wanted to talk about or really look deeply at. And I knew that you know it, it was important enough for it to have a platform, and that it sh it should be taught in our schools. It should be you know read to children at story time or at bedtime at home. You know, and um, I, I just felt that. The stories themselves, although they were good, they couldn't be left in a vacuum. There needed to be some context to it so that any learner from 9 to 14 years or upward would be able to read and understand the story, but within a context. And so that's why I decided to create a learning journey to go with the story. So at the back of each of the stories, there are various questions that the learner can then go upon once, you know, they can start answering and, you know, carrying out their own learning journey, their own research um, after they've read the story. There's a chronology, so a list of key dates that come up in the, the actual story. And then there's um, an activity that I call build your vocabulary um, because vocabulary is, is such a difficult thing to learn and to teach um, I decided to pick out phrases and words within the stories that, you know, children and young people would be able to go off and, and find out more about and understand how to build their, their vocabulary and to be able to apply that new vocabulary to new learning. So I then decided to go a step further and create the learning platform, which is initially where Everything lives relating to stories to be told. The stories can be purchased there. Um, I'm actually on the website now. The stories can be purchased there. And we've got other things like mini documentaries, which are just like mini films that I've created. And learning journeys that continue, that are, are an expansion or a continuation of each of the stories. So if you went on there, the, the website right now you, and you, you clicked on the Learning Journeys menu, you would see the titles of each of the four books that are out now, as well as four new titles that um, I'm going to be planning to launch this year. So, you know, if you clicked on to Caribbean Wind, there would come up um, an alternative chronology, suggestions for biographies, historical sources, videos, YouTube videos, and um, I'm developing a, an art gallery of alternative history. So there is, there, there's something for all 
types of learner. There's something for every type of learner. And it just feeds into the, my overall vision for stories to be told that, you know, we can take something that in a lot of ways is a difficult and emotive subject to explore and to learn about. And, you know, we can deliver it, we can approach it in a way that is both thoughtful, um, engaging, imaginative, interesting. And, you know, just to break down some of the taboos about the subject area, because I feel when you're ignorant about a subject area, the more you are ignorant, the more fearful you are, and the more prejudices you are, and the more, the more ignorance um, there is around the topic. And so that's what the multimedia platform is there to do. It's to help the ordinary person, help the ordinary learner engage, um, and, and, and hopefully it will, something on it will spark their interest to continue and, or develop their own learning journey about whatever aspect of the topic they want to find out about. So, you know, that was the rationale behind the learning journey. And, um, you know, it's growing all the time and, you know, it's something that I'm really proud of. It's, it's quite unique. So, yes, yeah, so that is really, really, um, you know, just interesting how you have your background as an educator, a teacher, and you're really incorporating these things in everything that you do. And it, and it leaves no room for confusion when people, <laughs> when people see you and they hear about you, they know what you stand for. So when people are getting these books, Tracy, what do what is what is it that you want the readers to take from this? When they're reading your book, what do you want them to learn and and take from reading these collection of books? I think the one thing that I want them to learn about is to understand that the world is multifaceted. The world is interconnected and it's not interconnected just because we have all this technology and we have all these social media platforms. The world is interconnected because this one phenomenon that took place over a period of 400 years is really the key to understanding how the world is today. You know, it, it's the one thing that can provide that, that link to a lot of international relationships between countries, uh, the way that countries um, define their foreign policies with each other, the way that, you know, various diasporas have developed and emerged out of the displacement um, of indigenous people from their homelands. And, you know, I know that these are difficult subjects to look at. But I, I feel that this is the, these are some of the main things readers to understand and to learn about as they're reading the stories. You know, I get so many readers saying to me, Tracy, you know, I never knew about this or, you know, I never knew about that. I never knew that, you know, that the Empire Windrush used to be a German Nazi warship that was used in World War II. You know, I never knew anything about the, the, the early period of European discovery and, and how Britain came about to, you know, in, encounter, you know, had its first encounter with the Caribbean. Um, I, I didn't know that um, it was a failed colonial exercise carried out by Scotland that caused the unification between Scotland and England. You know, many of us seem to think that it was when Elizabeth I died and James VI of Scotland became James I of England and united the two countries. But stories really do dispel a lot of assertions, a lot of assumptions that ordinary people like myself and like you make about history that we are taught at school and then you realize that you know a lot of it is not necessarily fact it's just it's just coming from a, a, a certain perspective and i thought right that's my strap line that is actually how i got the strap line history is a matter of fact or perspective because 
you know, there's so many perspectives in history. We, you know, we only hear about the perspective of the conqueror, of the victor. You know, we never hear the perspective of those who have gone past or those who have died and are not here to tell their to tell their tale. And so stories give that kind of balance of perspective and, you know, just lets the reader know, look, regardless of what you've been taught in school, regardless of your formal education, quite often it's what we go out and learn for ourselves that helps us to, you know, have a much more balanced view of the world that we live in. And, you know, a, a, a greater tolerance and a greater understanding of, you know, why things are the way they are today, why there are issues and, 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 and seemingly unsolved problems in certain parts of the world and more of, a, of, of an empathy for, um, you know, indigenous populations that are going through a tumultuous time because we can then use these stories to really unpick and, and understand what the roots of these issues are. So that's what I want readers to take away.